room talk, um, like light, lightning talk room, sorry. Uh, so I would like you to welcome our next speaker, Ludovic Dubost, uh, who is going to talk to you about how to finance open source projects. Here? Yep. It's good? Okay. Hello. Uh, so um, I'm uh, Ludovic Dubost. I've uh, created XWiki and uh, I've been working uh, uh, at XWiki and on XWiki for 14 years. Uh, XWiki is a company that is bootstrapped, so self financed, and it's owned by its employee and it has grown to 2 million euros revenue. Um, w quickly, what we do, we do a wiki software for enterprises. We have 5,000 installs around the world. It was presented by Vincent actually an hour ago in, uh, in this room. Um, and uh, it's a software that is recognized by large companies. We have Amazon using it worldwide for, for all its employees. We also created actually a second open source software, which is CryptPad, CryptPad.fr. Uh, its particularity is that it's a, a secure, a real-time online editing, so it's actually a bit Google Docs, but the data is encrypted on the server, so the server has no knowledge of what you are editing. It's actually quite interesting technology. Um, so um, I'm going to talk about how, how we, oh, I'm missing uh, something here. Oh, yeah, okay. Mm, let me reduce a bit the window. And uh, because it doesn't uh, show up fully. Okay, let me reduce. Sorry, up. Yeah. Okay, sounds good here like that. Okay, so how, um, how to finance an open source project? So this is going to be our experience. Doesn't, uh, doesn't apply to everybody, and there might be different cases. So the first is raise money, and actually, well, this, is, this talk is about avoiding to raise money. Um, I personally feel that if you raise money, there, the op there is an um, incompatibility or difficulties with the open source concept and a fight between the, the capitalistic way of making a maximum amount of money and the, the open source way of sharing what you do with your community. So this talk is about uh, um, uh, tricks and tips and ways to finance that don't involve raising money. Um, so first, uh, first tip is Google some of code. Uh, there's actually a stand now uh, here. We actually participated to the first one in 2005, and uh, this is, uh, has been a great, uh, a great start for Xwiki. It allowed us to have uh, students working on the code. This is how also I met uh, um, Sergio, who was a student in Romania, and this is how we got in the end to employ 20 people in Romania now. So it's been a, a big thing for us uh, to, uh, to participate to the Google Summer of Code. Uh, we also participated to, to Google Code in this year. Uh, Another tip is research projects. So uh, just before there was a presentation about the European Community funding, uh, funding bug bounties. Well, the European Community also funds projects, and open source is an interesting argument when you, when you are uh, looking for public funding. The fact that you're going to share your results with everybody makes it an argument. Um, we also have the chance as a French company to have also uh, significant funding for French projects, collaborative projects, and uh, we also have something called Crédit Impôt pour Recherche, and all this is actually uh, uh, similar to getting money from venture capital. So it's been a multi-million euros that we invested in creating our software. Uh, there is tomorrow a talk of getting uh, funding through the hyper-connected society in the decentralization dev room. Uh, so I can only encourage companies or people that create open source to candidate to projects. Um, 
service. So service is a, is an interesting solution, especially in the start, because it allows you to to it, it's not so difficult. You send the software out, and people uh, want help to implement it. So it's natural to do it. At the same time, it has issues because when you uh, when you rely on service uh, in in terms of growing a company, it's more difficult because you need to hire more people. It's not so easy to manage working on the software and working for clients. Uh, and so there, there are some difficulties there. So it's, for us, it's a great way to bring new support clients, but it's not the end goal. Uh, the end goal is to, is to get more direct revenue from the product we built. Uh, it's, there is also a tip which is trying to co-finance a new feature. So basically proposing to multiple clients to co-pay for getting a new feature in the system. Um, and a tip that we use is uh, tell, uh, tell uh, clients uh, that uh, you have to pay more for service if you don't have a support contract. So uh, it's very important for us to get support contracts. I will mention it in the next slide. Uh, this is what creates recurrent revenue and with which we can fund developers that are developing the open source software. Uh, and um, well, now some companies say, oh, well, I don't really need, the, I don't really need the, uh, the support, so why should I pay for it? So you tell them, ah, pay for it because it helps us make the software better over time, but it might not be an enough argument to go see the boss and say, we have to pay for the software that is free. Uh, and so uh, we, uh, we say, okay, look, uh, you want services, you want a day to help you, it's 1,500 euro. If you don't have a support contract, it's 1,000 euro if you, don't, if you have a support contract. And it's also good because it starts a discussion about the fact that the support contract is important for sustaining the software development. Um, enterprise support, this is what we're looking for most. Uh, and one thing we have done recently is actually push for getting three-year contracts. So different pricing if you take a contract for three years than if you take a f contract for one year. This creates more, uh, more sustainability and we have more visibility on our revenue. So that actually has been also quite interesting. And, uh, and uh, we, uh, so another tip is to have different levels uh, to adapt to the different types of customers that they can be. Um, one thing we don't do is we refuse to do support by the hour. Like, you want only an hour of support? No, we don't do that. We want a fixed contract for the year. Um, cloud, so cloud is very interesting. Now it, uh, it's, it's interesting because it's more international. So service, uh, it's usually the customers that are close to you that will come to you. It's more difficult to sell service at somebody at the, uh, the end of the world. Uh, with cloud, it's, uh, there are more possibilities there. However, it's significant infrastructure work to have a good cloud system, a payment system, complexity with payments all around Europe or around the world. Uh, but it allows to address smaller clients. It's more difficult to address smaller clients with s service and support. Uh, with cloud, you have a way to address small clients. It's difficult to set up a good pricing strategy. So for us, cloud is still low in our revenue. It's like, well, we have half our revenue that is linked to clients that are hosted, but direct online payment, uh, people coming to the website saying, I want a hosting X hosted XWiki, it's only, uh, it's only a couple percent of our revenue today. Um, Enterprise package, so we failed at this actually. So many open source big companies that raise money, they have a, an enterprise package and a, an open source package. So actually, we have not, we tried that and it was really, as a small company, this created confusion. Um, what I believe is that it needs to be easy for a customer, for a user that is using the open source software to come and uh, purchase something more. And the enterprise package was creating a situation where, well, you, it's not the same package as the one that is uh, free. So it was complicated and it created confusion. That was not as good for us. Um, paying extension. This is actually a direction to where we go today. The reason we go for that is because it's the same as cloud. We can go for more for international. So we can get revenue for international. And what we believe is that... Uh, we can give a reason uh, for people to ask money from their boss to pay for the open source software. So 
Um, sometimes it's, it's more a question of, it's hard for the, in a, we are an enterprise software, so we talk many, many times to developers or technical people inside the companies that like open source software. And they, well, maybe it's not a problem to give money back to the open source provider. But when they go see their boss, uh, the boss says, uh, well, do we have to pay for this? And the boss says, well, the, the guy says, well, no, it's not necessary. We don't have to. It's, uh, we can use it for free. And then they go, okay, so handle it for free. Because when the boss wants to make economies, he, he, he has an occasion to pay less, he pays less. So we believe that it can give a reason to, to buy. One thing is that we're going to keep these extensions open source. So if people really want them for free, they can go to, to GitHub and uh, build them themselves and install them themselves. But we're going to make it a bit more difficult to get it for free. Um, and uh, one new thing we're going to try is for CryptPad. CryptPad is, a, is more a cloud software, so it's a website that you can use it for free. Uh, and it's also an open source software, you can install it. Uh, but so when people, we build the payment system when you reach more than 50 megabytes of content on, on the main server, cryptpad.fr. And uh, well, we have left, we have left this, the, the code for paying in the version that people would install on their own instances. So people have to actually deactivate directly the limitations to 50 mega megabytes if they install CryptPad on their own server. And what we want to do is propose, if you're hosting CryptPad, well, let's do revenue sharing. So let's let you also let your user pay potentially, and uh, we're going to share the revenue with you. So this is something new, and uh, actually we have a first uh, user in Greek, in Greece, that uh, is going to do that and set, let, let the system like that. Um, and so to finish, methods we didn't try yet, uh, crowdfunding, donations. So donations, we don't believe it too much. I think it can be good, it can be okay. And donations, advertisement, that can be an interesting approach for software that are um, um, ma mainstream for users. So user software, not company software. We don't believe too much in donations from companies. Um, and so advertisement, same thing. And uh, we also want to try selling online training, uh, not only because of the revenue it can do, but because it can help people be more successful with the software. And so crowdfunding is something that we find interesting, but it also uh, requires a significant amount of work to launch. Um, this presentation was done with CryptPad, so if you want to try CryptPad, go to CryptPad.fr. And XWiki, you can try it on, uh, you can also download it or try it on the cloud. I have two minutes for questions. Yes? Yes? So, can I explain the model extension model? So, XWiki has an app store. Uh, so you can install extensions in XWiki. Uh, so these are applications or, or features. So connect to Google Apps, connect to Microsoft Office 365. We have actually already 25 extensions we maintain uh, over the, the, the basic XWiki software. So actually, if you compare XWiki to Confluence, uh, and uh, Confluence, not only it's actually you have to pay for Confluence uh, more than the support contracts of XWiki, but you also have to pay for every extension in XWiki. So what we do is that we actually, our price, uh, our 25 extensions uh, are at, with XWiki and XWiki support contract are at the price of Confluence with uh, no extensions. And then you have to pay for every extension in Confluence. So we're going to make uh, some, some of these extensions today are free. So we have lots of extensions that are free. We're going to make them paying. They're still open source, so if people really want them for free, they can get them. But they, in, in the extension manager of XWiki, they will see paying extension. And if you buy two or three extensions, it would be the same thing to buy the support. If you buy the support, you get all of them. So, uh, paying extensions will be recurring and are already recurring. So right now we have two paying extensions there per year. Uh, so it's a per year pricing. Cloud is uh, recurring also. Our support contracts are recurring. So it's a per year pricing. We have no, we sell, we never sell uh, licenses. So not indeterminate licenses, always yearly. Yeah. 
And this is what I, also what I mentioned about the three year, trying to get from the clients uh, a, a long term commitment. This is important because so uh, it can be scary for the client. Uh, usually they don't always take it the first year, but the second year they go for the for the long term commitment very often when they feel safe basically. Ten seconds. <laughs> Thank you.